Hello and thank you very much for joining us on today's edition of Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. Today we've traveled all the way from Accra to Ekumfi in the central region. We are here to tour the farmland and also visit the factory to see how your favorite eco juice is processed for exportation and for your per user. Now, how is the Ikunfi factory faring under government 1D1F? How is the exportation of eco juice been so far? Come with me as we explore and also answer these questions and many more. This is um, our Aubrey site. As you can see here, we keep, we, we work every day, we keep planting every day. So this is a um, far greater than what you saw the last time you came here. We're just around this side, which was quite big. But now see, we go up to up to the other end. And because of the, uh, our capacity for production and then what the future of this company is, but I'm sure you, you know that we are hitting the markets in America uh, in the course of the year. And then we need to grow so much, so that's what we are doing here. We plan doing around uh, 1,200 acres. Okay, so as you see, we keep we keep expanding every day. So if you ask me where we are today, I may not be able to give it because we keep we keep working every day. On this side, on this side, but there are many other sites. So from here, we are getting onto because we acquired land in the area and then we we we, we work on it as as the days come by. So from here, we're going to these are some of our uh, our large farms. Okay, we have about um, five of these and then one in preparation at the moment. So we are working on that. In all, um, if we are working comfortably with 6,000 acres, we are, we are good to go. But we are looking at um, going up to 12,000 so that we have, we have a certain buffer. Um, we are delivering to Ghana, but people call us and say, we can't find it, we can't find it. And it's because um, what we are delivering is not just juice, that uh, you're going to get water, sugar, and all of that as you. So if you have demand, you just have to push it. For us, we cannot push. This is what we have. We grow 14 months time. It becomes fruit, ripe fruit. We take it to the factory. We press it into juice, and that is what it is. With no water, nothing. So I mean, this is a premium product, and that's why we are stepping out there. We have three planting schemes. So the first one is what we have even deviated from the traditional alt grower scheme because it has some challenges. So what we have is a shared grower scheme where with, with people in the community, uh, we do the farms and then uh, uh, there's a scheme to keep them as workers. In that same scheme, they are outgrowers and another scheme, they are owners. So it, we call it a shared grower, it's a deviation from the outgrower, although it has a, the tenants in it, but it is modeled around the, the traditional booster system. So they take a third, we take a third, a third goes for the practices. That, that we do here. So that is one scheme. The second scheme is where an independent person says, I want to grow. Because of the capacity of our machinery, we are not, we are not into 10 acres, 20 acres, we're into large. Okay, because our production capacity is 10 tons per hour. If I say 10 tons, I mean um, four acres of planted pineapple in an hour. So if you give me, say I have 20 acres, that's like my one day production or even less. So, okay, so where independent people have large scale investment in pineapple production, but it doesn't just happen because we also keep um, a certain policy where we're not just buying pineapples because we're just squeezing these pineapples, adding nothing, but just squeezing them and then taking them through um, our processing into the box. We want to be sure which pineapples we are processing. Okay, so the large scale, that's the second scheme where an independent person says, I can do 50 acres, I can do 80 acres, I can do whatever. Then we come in and have an agreement with you and we control your, your, your practices so that we are sure of the kind of um, fruit you are bringing. So that's the second scheme where independent large scale producers will also come in link with us. And then there's what we see here, that is the factory itself generating these fruits. So where we'll be visiting today are, are factory factory owned farms. Our company is called Ekufi Fruits and Juices Limited. What uh, the, the meaning is in the name. So we deal with various fruits. Okay. And so and so we we do various juices. I mean the mixes. We are doing pineapples because um, uh, if you want to do juice. Oh, okay. So we're doing pineapples because of uh, the fact that pineapples grew 
every day. They are not seasonal. So they are all year round. So that's our base. But we have the others. So here on our farms, we, there are three varieties of pineapples that you know, and we grow all here. In fact, we've added a fourth. So we're doing um, the smooth cayenne. There's the smooth cayenne. That is the, the abrobe, the Ghana noon abrobe. When I was a kid, they call abrobe. It is white. It has this pulse inside and all of that. It's bottle. Um, it is bottle shaped, etc. That's the sweet, uh, the, the um, uh, sugar loaf. Uh, you know, it has its properties. Along the line came uh, smooth cayenne. That is bulky. That is um, that is yellow. So you can see that yellow color. It is sweet, but not as sweet as the sugar. We do that here because you know we are doing mixes. But I will not give you the kind of um, ratios we're using. But at least they come with their individual properties. So sugar loaf will come with the sweetness. Um, smooth cayenne is bigger. The bigger, the juicier. So it gives us more juice. And then there's uh, there's MD2, which is also in the market. So we're growing that one here. We are trying another variety called the uh, the Queen Victoria. That one is smaller. But you know, as the name implies, it used to when it came it came up. In the, in the time of the queen. So it was called the queen of pineapples. It is small but very expensive. We grow that one as well here. And so those mixes make the eco juice that, you, that, you, that you're drinking. That's what we grow here. But beyond this one, we grow, we also grow uh, watermelons here because we have the land here. So anytime we plant our pineapples, before they come up to be full grown like this, we would have grown our watermelon and harvested them even before the pineapples take over like we have. And the other lengths to get citrus from Asebu. So I'm sure from here we'll look at the Asebu project as well. We are getting ginger and all of that. So there's a, there's a wide opportunity. For people to While we toured the Obri, Ekumfi Sado, and Ekumfi Edumafa farmlands, we met the director of agronomy, Baini Isaiah Kankam, and this is what he told the news team. The harvest from the farm, we take the crumbs out, then we load it into the car, then we send it to the factory for processing. So here, because we are not with out, you know, the machine cannot take this one. So we have to normally we call it the crown. You do that so that uh, the fruit can be washed in the basin, so that uh, the machine can crash. You know, we are not doing hand peeling. When you get there, you see it. So it's properly washed then clean before it enter into the crusher. So basically every week we do production. So this week we are sending 250,000 fruit to the factory. So there's, we have these two cars. There's one also loaded at other side. So this one, this morning, this is what we are doing now. We finally arrived at the factory and since it's a food produce, one needs to be properly dressed. The news team were tasked to take off all earrings, watches, bracelets and necklaces. We were also given headgears and the men in the team were given nose masks to cover their beards. Rubber to cover our feet were also given to us. The director of operations at Ekumfi Fruits and Juices Limited, Frederick Kobina Aqua, was our tour guide for the day. Today we'll be seeing our processing. It's going to be a very short trip. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Brushes with water. And as the pineapples fight against each other, the brushes are washing them. And then from here, they go up to the spatter. The 
is an overload. That's why the machine automatically stops. If we are doing ginger, we mill the ginger and add to the scratch. If we are doing citrus, we add it up here. If we are doing watermelon, we add, we add it up here. So you can see this is citrus and tropical fruit processing. It is a poly fruit. And poly means many. Right. So as I told you earlier, from the farm, we came straight to the factory. And as you can see right behind me, they are processing the fruit. So first they wash the fruit. Like it's automatically done. They wash the fruit, then it goes through the process, through the machine, and then we get the fruit juice that comes out already made. Here we come to these receiving tanks. But you realize that uh, the juice will be going into opaque boxes on which you write shake well, etc. But how well, you don't know. So we have invested in a system called a homogenizer. This is what the homogenizer does is that it is a mechanical process that shakes the juice such that it sits down for one year, there's still no separation. Unlike you would have typically of the fruit, uh, the pineapple juice in a bottle where you see that you see a certain particle down and water up. So that one is gone. From here, we come from the homogenizer, we come to this one which is a, a preheat. Preheat because we have harvested from the farm this morning. It has come into um, water regulation here. It has gone through extraction. You are taking it to the UHT. And the UHT will take it up to 125 degrees. You don't want the juice to still experience some shock. We are treating the juice like a human being. So before you take it to so much heat, you have to prepare it so that it is conscious of some heat coming. So it goes through preheat. From preheat, it goes to the pasteurizer, where we do the UHT. From UHT, there's a chiller system on it. So by the time it leaves here, there will already be water drizz drizzling because it is chilled, okay? And from here, it goes straight into filling. That's our parking line, that's what we do. Once the machine stops and it has to start, there's a calibration. So it calibrates, to leave some, so that's why we have here, and then it begins like this. Okay. So that's your, your super premium uh, your juice. And then from here, I did not know that you need a straw. So typically in the factory, we have about 75 people working in the factory. But then many of the jobs we have are, are downstream on the farms, where, as you saw, all those light trucks, they are human beings that do them. Mm. Yes. So in all, both direct and indirect? Okay, so, so we are in the thousands, but I, because we keep shifting, I don't want to, to be giving figures. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Depend on, depending on what work we are doing at what time, okay. but we, are, we run in the thousands. Okay. So earlier I was reported that the place had been temporarily closed. It has never because... been so. So it has never been so. I am, sometimes I wonder why people won't, only want to, to... But it becomes news when somebody says it's not working. Okay. <laughs> so as you saw from the farm, every production is triggered by, by the agronomy team. So when the fruits are ripe and makes economic sense to do, it will trigger production. So like if I grow a thousand uh, fruits today, I expect 1,000 one, uh, one year or 14 months from today. But it might not exactly happen that way. So they trigger it. So there are times there will be harvest or there will be ripe fruits. But we'll say, you know what, we can't work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and be doing. Sometimes we need to aggregate and run maybe four days in a week, in a row. So somebody comes in a day that you are not running and it's already out there, they are not working. I don't get it. 
So how far with the exportation of the equi juice? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, your your premium quality equi juice has hit the the stands in the U.S. as we speak. Um, we are working to begin full scale export in the course of the year. Yeah. We are working at the U.K. We are working at Dubai as we speak. So today we've gone through the entire process that a Kunfi Fruits and Juices Limited go through to produce the tasty fruit juices that we enjoy on the market. Don't hesitate to buy from them because it is a Ghanaian-owned company. Reporting for BizTech on Ghana Web TV, my name is Ernestina Sewa Asante and Biz Headlines is right next after the show.